if it is or if it ain't, it's going to come out. Good morning, everybody. It's your girl, Miracle Sims, and you're listening to God, Sex, and Love. You want to get a little of inspiration and juice? It is October the 26th, 2022. And, oh, excuse me, no, today is the 27th. <laughs> October the 27th, 2022. And the topic is Touch Not My Anointed. Touch Not my anointed. I hope that you all had a great day yesterday. Mine was just fine. It is now Thursday. Thursday. Friday's right around the corner. Then the weekend. Then a whole new week. Days just seem to fly on by. Um, speaking of Friday, y'all know that a new episode of God, Sex, and Love, the talk show, should be going live at 7. Uh, we have Mr. Richard Rains, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, tomorrow has a very interesting take on George Washington and uh, history and things like that. So be on the lookout. New episode tomorrow at 7 p.m. Um, well, you know, the GSL talk show. <laughs> um, nothing too much to report from yesterday. You know, uh, same, same. I... I I know it's it's interesting. I know y'all probably like you just resting every day, right? Um, yeah, this this has been like a little slow week. It has I haven't had any additional um, things outside of my you know my home hustles and sharing and networking and all of that. But I haven't had to record anything this week. Um, and I know that I'm working tomorrow, so and I, we got a busy weekend ahead as well. So that's probably why your girl had so much rest this week. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, nothing much to report from yesterday. Um, woke up this morning at the sound of my alarm. So at four, uh, I listened to my prayer meditation this morning, but I must have fell asleep on it. So I ended up listening to it again. <laughs> um, and... I don't know if it was just when I woke up this morning or when, whenever, but I feel like from when I woke up, I, I just heard touch not my anointed. So, and it wasn't on the prayer meditation, but, um, yeah, after I got done listening to it for the second time, um, and doing a couple little things online, I just went back to start, you know, I went to study touch not my anointed. The verses were resonating, so here we are. Here we are. Touch not my anointed. I think it's very interesting. I know we were talking about the other day, because I don't think it was yesterday. Whenever that day, I was talking about being barren. Um, Just noticing how different we are versus biblical figures. And, you know, they just had so much more respect and honor for God's people. Like, now, granted, I mean, all everybody didn't, you know, but... It just seems like these days people are just so uh, brazen, right, with their responses to the men or women of God, you know, uh, so quick to try to call people false prophets, just all these things, so quick to point the finger, not only at God's people, but God himself, you know. Um, and I mean, it's not anything that shocking or new based on, you know, what the Bible tells us that, you know, the end days are going to be like. And even how some people in the Bible reacted to Christ and, and everything, right? So it's nothing new. But at the same time, it's just very interesting. So, um, yeah, as I was reading the verses this morning and getting ready to write them down and everything like that, I mean, just a different perspective to think about this this whole idea right of pointing the finger at god's people at um doing any kind of harm to god's people um 
as well as being, you know, again, brazen towards the Lord. So this is what I came across this morning. Psalm 105 and 15 says, saying, touch not my anointed ones, do my prophets no harm. Uh, so, yeah, that's obviously where that quote came from or the topic name came from that particular verse. Um, and I just thought it was very interesting how it was just very plain, simple. It wasn't said in any other fashion to be confused with any other, you know, command. It said, touch not my anointed ones, do my prophets no harm. Now, the interesting thing is, I know we've heard over the years about, you know, martyrs. We heard what happened to disciples. Um, anybody that's following Christ, they get some type of persecution. So, I mean, it, it comes with the territory um, of being a follower of Christ, right? Um, but at the same time, to those individuals that do these things, those people, you know, well, I guess we'll get into that. <laughs> we'll get into that. Now, just because something still happens to the people of God, right, doesn't mean that God isn't going to uh, repay for the actions. Um, again, listen, listening to Mr. Frank Turek just really put things into perspective for me to continue to understand that at the end of the day, God can do whatever he wants to do. He can allow what he wants to allow. And he can take people, you know, from this earthly plane to the, the heavenly plane, right, whenever he wants. So just because God allows the persecution, right, he may even allow the person, you know, his prophet to be handled wrongly to death, you know, to death or whatever. Um, and maybe he'll take that individual or whatever the case is. Um but still, I guess, you know, we should keep that first verse in our hearts and minds that we should not be uh, touching the anointed ones, right? Um, Psalm 20 and 6 says, Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving might of his right hand. So again, I mean, reading that verse kind of makes you wonder, well, well, Lord, why don't you just strike the people down in the midst of the, you know what I mean? Like we have our ways that we would do it or, and, you know, our limited understanding X, Y, and Z. Like, why did you allow Stephen to be stoned? Blah, 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 right? Um, but with Stephen being stoned, right, and Paul being there or Saul, I guess at that time being there um, and witnessing that or whatnot, became one of the life-changing moments for Saul to become Paul, right? I know that um, I've been listening to, I know I spoke about the, the butterfly effect, and then I know they caused something called the ripple effect or something like that, the, the fact that some things happen for a greater good, right? Because um, all things work together for the good of those that love God. Um, even if it don't, in my home opinion, I always add on that little phrase, even the things that we don't understand. Um, so it may not make sense to us certain things happening and why God allows it. And even if, if it's an, his anointed people that, you know, again, are, is getting the persecution. But, um, I mean, I was reminded this morning when I read a quote, but then also just in general, the Bible tells us, you know, basically it, it, doesn't say that weapon it tells us that weapons are going to be formed uh but they will not harm us right um i'm paraphrasing that verse y'all know no weapons formed against me shall prosper right um yeah it didn't say that the weapons weren't going to be formed against you it just said it won't prosper and it depends on what prosper means to the lord that's the other thing as well it doesn't mean that every gun pointed your way isn't going to shoot a bullet you know um uh, now, he may say, if it's not your time to go, X, Y, and Z, you never know. Like, you know, the, the bullet might get jammed in the, in the gun, you know, if the Lord don't want to take you right now. You know, you just never know um, in regards to scenarios like that. But um, any event that he is ready to take you, then the bullet, bullet will take you. And I guess that's just one of those things to, to think about um, when it comes to our time here and everything like that. Um and that God has control over all things. 
So just a little something to, to those that are, well, you know, walking in faith and they you are struggling with the idea of persecution and struggling with the idea of like, you know, being an anointed one and you're, you're feeling all the wrath of that, you know, um, I don't know, just putting things into perspective for, for those people. Because again, that verse, just because it's a, uh, you know, <laughs> the weapon isn't going to prosper, don't mean that the weapon isn't going to be there, you know. But anywho, 1 Samuel 26 and 11 says, The Lord forbid that I should put out my hand against the Lord's anointed, but take now the spear that is at his head and the jar of water. And let us go. Um, now, obviously, this is a powerful, powerful moment. Um, you know, there was the tension between Saul and David. Like, Saul, you know, I guess didn't like the anointing being on David. And all this different stuff was going after David all those years, I, I, however long it was. Y'all got to go read those entire accounts by yourself or whatever the case is. Um, uh, matter of fact, here's another verse from that. Uh, it says here, do, 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 do. Um, 1 Samuel 26 and 9 says, but David said to Abisha, <laughs> Abisha, do not destroy him for who can put out his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless. So there you go. There you go. Um, obviously now, you know, David was a particular, you know, human, right? He was a man after God's own heart, everything like that. But um, maybe we all should be a little bit more like David these days, you know, um, be a little bit more careful about speaking against God's people, like be a little bit more careful about how we treat people in general. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, he had every opportunity to uh, take us all out, basically. Um, but he saw the importance of not taking us all out and just proving the point that he could have taken us all out, you know, Um you know, in the Go Deeper section, there are those verses that, um, of, you know, of um, David revealing to Saul that, hey, you know, I could have taken you out. I got this water that was next to your head, X, Y, and Z. But I, you know, basically in good conscience couldn't take you out because you were guys anointed. Uh, <laughs> that's what those verses were saying in the Go Deeper section and whatnot. But you guys can peruse all of that on your heart, souls, and mind, you know, on your own time and whatever. But, um but yeah, I think we should all get a little bit more like David in this um in this particular uh instance because uh you know, again, the Bible's very clear about not touching God's anointed. I say that goes deeper as far as like not speaking against God's anointed, not doing any harm towards God's anointed. Um, you know, that's the juice today that, you know, ultimately uh like like this verse here says, uh who can put out his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? I don't think any according to the word. And, and that's the juice. <laughs> that's the juice. The Bible verse of today is Matthew 10 and 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in, two, in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Friends, I hope you all enjoyed this juice this morning. Thank you so much for listening to God, Sex, and Love. Your daily dose of inspiration, the juice. I pray you guys can go forth and have a wonderful day. And I look forward to talking to you all tomorrow, if the Lord's will. Bye-bye. This has been brought to you in part by Anointed Touch Health, Fitness, and Beauty. Eat right and exercise daily. Walk with God. Run from the devil. First John 2020, you have an anointing from the Holy One. Visit anointedtouch-hfb.com for more information.